Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, host of the Raiders Board. And coming up on today's show, as it stands right now, the Raiders have the sixth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. So I'm going to tell you my top 10 players that I would have on my big board for the silver and black. Then, on the end of that episode, I'm going to show you an ESPN mock draft reaction. ESPN sat down and projected the first 32 picks. Find out who the Raiders took and find out what I thought about it. So as it stands right now, at the moment that I am making this video, the current 2024 NFL draft order is as follows. The Chicago Bears have the number one overall pick via the Carolina Panthers. At number two, it's the Patriots. Three Cardinals, four Commanders, Bears at number five. And then there's our Las Vegas Raiders at six. Jets, Giants, Titans, Chargers is how it is all rounded out with all five and eight records, which is kind of crazy because the Raiders were at pick number eight, but after the Titans won a Monday Night Football and after the Giants won a Monday Night Football, this now puts Las Vegas at number six. So coming up here is going to be my big board, and I have these players ranked from 10 all the way down to one, and these rankings are based on how I think they fit with the Raiders on top of the Raiders' needs. Like, the rankings that you're going to see are not how I would rank them if terms of NFL draft prospects, this show is about the Raiders. This show is about making this team better, and this big board is solely based on what the Raiders should do at pick number six. If you're the Raider fan, you're like, Mitch, I already want to start talking about the offseason. I get it, man. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. We're going to be doing NFL draft coverage for the rest of this season and all of 2024 leading up to the draft. But if you're also the Raider fan that's like, no, man, this team still has a chance to make the playoffs, guess what? For those of you watching this live right now, we're going to do a Thursday Night Football preview, and we're going to still do watch parties for every single Raiders game for the remainder of the season. All right, let's get in now to my current big board. Coming in here at number 10, I'm going to go with the cornerback position, Kool-Aid McKinstry. And if you want to talk about a cool name, I definitely subscribe to the, if you have a really sick name, there's a chance that you're going to be a good player. And he's going to roll in here at number 10. Let's go to number 9 here. I'm going to go with the interior defensive tackle out of Illinois, Newton. He's probably the best DT in this draft. And I actually don't have him as a top 10 overall prospect. But when I look at this Raiders defense, there's a lot of good to actually be happy and excited about. But DT is definitely an area that we need to be able to go out and improve in. My number one corner in this year's draft is Nate Wiggins, corner out of Clemson. And I like McKinstry. I think McKinstry might actually be a better athlete. Wiggins, to me, is the better overall corner. But he is rolling in here at number eight. Let's go to number seven now. I'm going to go Dallas Turner, edge rusher, outside linebacker. If the Raiders really want to continue to, like, grow Malcolm Koontz, like, I think Dallas Turner, Malcolm Koontz, you put Tyree Wilson on the interior, you let Max Crosby cook. I'll tell you what, man, that's a hell of a defense that... I'd be really interested to see how that turns out. Let's all go back to the offensive side of the football. And Joe Alt, offensive tackle for Notre Dame. Like, I'm not really sitting up here saying that the Raiders need a left tackle. But to me, there's certain players that this team needs to go out and value. And with the injuries that Colton Miller has kind of, you know, been racking up here a little bit, Miller also has some experience playing right tackle with Jermaine Illuminor set to hit free agency. It could be an interesting idea. Maybe you draft Joe Walt, make him your long-term left tackle, and then you kick over Colt Miller to the right tackle spot. To me, if you do that, you have one of the better tackle duos in the NFL. Now, before I get into my top five prospects that I'd want the Raiders to draft at number six, do you want the Raiders to draft a QB in round one? Because here's just the cold, hard fact. 90% of the draft conversation that's going to be this offseason is going to be around the Raiders potentially drafting a QB. And if you want the Raiders to draft a quarterback, because I see a lot of yeses right now, I think you're really going to like my top five players here. Let's go to number five on my list for big board at number six. I'm just going to call him Alu, and I am a Penn Stater because that's the nickname that they go with because, as you can see, the name's not the easiest to pronounce. He is the number one offensive tackle in this year's draft, and he kind of reminds me of Penn A. Sewell in terms of how confident I am that this guy is going to be an absolute stud at the NFL level. Let's go to number four here, Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's get one thing straight. To me, Marvin Harrison Jr. might be the best overall prospect in this year's draft. The only reason that he is number four on my big board is because, as it stands right now, the Raiders don't need a receiver. At, as it stands right now, you got Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, Trey Tucker, all under contract next season. And spoiler alert, the players that you're about to see are going to be, in fact, 
all quarterbacks. Now, support for today's show is rolling in here from Waterboy, and oftentimes people ask Chugs and I when we meet him in person, how the hell do you guys bounce back so quickly the next day after a watch party, after a Thirsty Thursday showdown? I tell people all the time, there's nothing wrong with doing things that are actually good for your body once in a while, and Waterboy is an absolute game changer. So if you haven't already gotten started with them, go try them out, waterboy.com slash chatsports for 15% off. Waterboy is a hydration powder scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. There are other hydration packs on the market, but nothing comes anywhere close to fighting those Sunday scaries like Waterboy. With zero sugar and over three times the electrolytes of liquid IV, your hangover will stand no chance. Unlike their competitors, Waterboy has added ingredients beyond just hydration to help with nausea, anxiety, and fatigue. We all know that hydration alone isn't enough to help after that bender that you just had in Vegas. And for a limited time, our listeners here at the Raiders Sport are going to get 15% off your entire order at waterboy.com slash chat sports. Wake up Friday, Monday, heck, I don't care what day it is after a Raiders watch party. I know that that's not easy. And sometimes I need a little uh, extra pep in my step, especially to do this show. So go to waterboy.com slash chat sports. That link's going to be available to you all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. You guys ready? Coming in here at number three. I'm all on board, man. I'm all on board the Jaden Daniels hype train quarterback out of LSU, winner of the Heisman Trophy. This guy is, every time he steps on the field, he's been the most athletic player out there. He's been able to improve. He's had to overcome a lot of stuff. And I actually believe if the Raiders do end up keeping Antonio Pierce at head coach, the quarterback that is most likely to be under center for the silver and black is Jaden Daniels, who has a very good relationship. In fact, Daniels shouted out Antonio Pierce at his Heisman uh, ceremony. I got Aiden O'Connell right last offseason with Josh McDaniels, and I'm pretty confident that I'd get this one right as well. Let's go to number two here, and I'm a little bit lower on Caleb Williams than most people because I don't have him as the number one overall quarterback in the 2024 NFL Draft. Is Caleb Williams the most gifted quarterback in this year's class? Yes. Does he have the highest ceiling? Yes, he does, but I'm just being honest with you. I know what the nation is. I know how tough of a fan base this is, and I don't know if he has the mental toughness to be a great NFL quarterback at times. I don't know if he has the mental toughness to deal with the nation. The quarterback, to me, that is the most mentally tough, and when you add that with the overall talent, to me, Drake May is Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers coming out of college in terms of overall talent, overall mental makeup, and that is why Drake May is the number one player that I would want the Las Vegas Raiders to draft if somehow he was available at six. But I'll be real with you. I think Jaden Daniels will probably be there at six, or you might have to trade up to like number four. If you want Caleb Williams or Drake May, you got to trade up to one or two. And if you want to trade up to one or two, you're either giving up two first round picks and then some, or you got to trade away a guy like Devontae Adams. And to me, the Raiders have to draft a franchise quarterback in 2024. Even if that means you've given up a lot of draft capital, because the last time I checked, until I see a first-round pick worth a damn, people are like, oh, Mitch, you can't give up all those first-round picks. Imagine if I would have told you I could trade Cleveland Furl, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Abram, Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett, Alex Leatherwood, Tyree Wills. I, I mean, I'm going to do it in a heartbeat. But I'm so serious about trading talent. If I got to move on from Devontae Adams to get a franchise guy like a Caleb Williams or Drake May, I'll do it. The only player that will never be traded on the Raiders, at least this offseason, is number 98, Max Crosby. That's the only guy that they will never trade. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, let's look at an ESPN mock draft reaction. So I figured what I would do on this show, because of all the hype around the Raiders being at number six right now, is I would tell you my top 10 prospects if the draft were to be today. And here's the thing, that list is going to change because I'm going to get more time in the offseason to do extra homework. I'm going to get more time to watch some tape, to watch these players. There's going to be players that leave for free agency. There's going to be a lot of different top tens that are out there. So don't hold me to just that one. But I wanted to give you my mindset, and then I also wanted to give you a, a different mindset and give my reaction on it, which is what we're going to have here now with this ESPN mock draft. So the rules of this mock draft are as follows. As for the draft order, we used ESPN's Football Power Index, FPI, which projects when each team might be picking based on simulations of the rest of the season through week 14 Sunday games. 
That means the Bears, via the one-win Panthers pick first, it's one of three selections that has already been traded along with Houston's pick going to Arizona and Cleveland's pick headed to Houston. I did not project any additional trades just yet, though. So essentially what they're telling you is this. They're looking at the remainder of the season for all 32 teams, and they're trying to project what that draft order is going to be. So where they had the Raiders end up finishing here is at pick number seven. So they believe that teams like the New York Giants, the Washington Commanders, the Houston, uh, the Tennessee Titans are going to be worse than the Raiders at the end of the season, which is why they're at seven. So before I tell you who ESPN projected the silver and black to pick at seven, I got to show you what their top six picks are, right? At number one, going off the board here to the Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC, the New England Patriots, Drake May, out of North Carolina, and I'm pretty sure I just saw Roley put a hole through the table. Marvin Harrison Jr., he's going to go to the Arizona Cardinals, wide receiver out of, out of Ohio State. Jaden Daniels at number four, which I told y'all he's going to continue to rise and rise up that board. And after the NFL Combine, I don't think it's impossible to think that he goes number four. The problem is I don't know if the Giants are going to be able to do it because of Daniel Jones's massive contract that he still has. At number five, it's Olu the Washington Commanders, they take him, offensive tackle out of Penn State. And then Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Bama, is going to the Tennessee Titans. So my question to you is this. We're on the board, and usually I know who the head coach is. Usually I, I know who the general manager is. But let's just say it's you, me, Chugs. We're in the Raiders' war room. We're in the draft room, and it's our time to pick. If those were the top six picks... Honestly, I'd probably ask to trade down. But hey, who would be your next pick here at seven? I started this show saying I want a quarterback, right? That's what I want. I wanted the QB. And ESPN, they did exactly that. With the seventh pick in the ESPN mock draft, the Las Vegas Raiders have selected Michigan Wolverines quarterback J.J. McCarthy. Now, McCarthy is one of the most all-time winningest college football players. QB's out there. He's been able to take down Ohio State. He's had to deal with a lot of drama, and I do think that it, that's the impressive things that I've seen out of McCarthy. He's been able to show that he's a good leader when there's a lot of distractions going on, and here's the thing. I can't look into the future, but I'm going to guess somewhere down the road that there's going to be some drama around the Raiders because it just seems like there always is. This season for Michigan, 74.2% completion percentage, 2,630 yards, 19 touchdowns, four interceptions. He has been a Peruvian winner, but is that going to translate to the NFL game? What'd you say? Heavy run game there with the Michigan Wolverines. I know some of y'all are going to be like, well, what if we get Jim Harbaugh? I'll tell you my opinion here in just a second on Harbaugh and McCarthy. But this is what ESPN had to say on why the Raiders went out and drafted McCarthy in this mock draft. Could the Raiders roll with Aiden O'Connell in 2024? Sure. But all signs right now point to them starting over at quarterback with the new regime in place, even after signing Jimmy Garoppolo in the 2023 offseason. McCarthy is instinctive, efficient, and effective as a second effort creator outside of the pocket. The Michigan scheme does him no favors in terms of statistics, but NFL scouts continue to tell me that McCarthy will be drafted earlier than expected. With Shador Sanders, Colorado, and Quinn Ewers, Texas, expected to return to college for the 2024 season, McCarthy is the lone first-round caliber pass remaining on my board. And if things play out this way, this would be the quickest that four quarterbacks have come off the board in the common draft era since 1967. So, how would you grade it? If the Raiders on draft night pick number seven, they come away with J.J. McCarthy, at quarterback, you're taking a QB at seven. That's your franchise guy. Your new head coach wants him. Your new offensive coordinator wants McCarthy because it is a reach. Like, it is absolutely a reach to take McCarthy at seven. However, if you desperately need a quarterback, what would you do here? A, B, C, D, or F. My grade on the Raiders taking J.J. McCarthy is going to be right here after this YouTube ad break. I know that I said that the Raiders need to take a QB in. I stand 10 toes with that. In fact, I want the Raiders. Like, I would rather the Raiders trade up to try to get a guy like Jaden Daniels, a Caleb Williams, or a Drake May, instead of taking J.J. McCarthy here at 7. I'm going to be just blunt, and a lot of people that watch the show probably know my opinion on McCarthy. 
McCarthy is not going to be a good NFL quarterback. And if this was the pick, I would give it a big fat F. Not a D, not a C minus, not a D plus. This would be an F grade for me because he's not a quarterback that deserves to be drafted in round one. He doesn't. Hell, I would take Michael Penix Jr. over J.J. McCarthy. I might even take Bo Nix over J.J. McCarthy. And I don't even like Bo Nix all that much. Even, and I mean this, even if Jim Harbaugh was the Las Vegas Raiders head coach in 2024 and they drafted McCarthy, I'd still hate that. Like, I wouldn't want to hear the argument, oh, well, they played together in college. Yeah, they, they played together in college. Here's the thing. College football is a lot different than the NFL. You're not going to be able to run the exact same scheme. And sure, the Michigan scheme does not help out McCarthy in terms of a stat standpoint, but I'm also a guy that watches tape. I also watch a lot of film. Like, to me, McCarthy is not a quarterback that deserves to go in round one. And sure, he might end up going round one. If they win the national championship, there's a chance he goes in round one. But with how much talent there is out there at quarterback, man, I'd rather you just wait on QB at that point. Like, I'd rather you say, all right, if we didn't get a QB out of Jaden Daniels, if we didn't get a guy like Caleb Williams or Drake May, I'm going to just wait on QB. I'm going to wait on QB. I would rather the Raiders trade for Justin Fields than to draft J.J. McCarthy at number seven.